Shalom, we praise it to Yahweh, Barashem, Yahushai, Barashem, Harakar, Kudash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders, a great millstone, all rule well. And Shalom to the whole full let. This is Payal of the GMS London camp, and this is News and Prophecy, Prophecy and News. I've got an article here from Zero Edge, and the title reads, Seven Reasons Why a Maxine Passport Should Give Us a Pause for Full. And over in the UK, we've just had um, the lockdown, so-called uh come come off and basically a lot of people are getting back to the life that they were living pre pandemic as far as they're concerned. And and they don't want to think about anything. Cause they've been on lockdown for so long, for so many months. But the reality is that just cause you can get your hair cut, your little your trim, you know, your shape up with the fade or whatever just cause you can get um, you can go out for drinks and on the weekend now uh, it's ain't stopping the heavenly father's word right. you could be really stupid. so it's Isaiah 55 and 10 uh, says for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that God forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it yeah and the heavenly father he his word has been established from the foundations before the foundations of the earth being that of these end times that we're presently in all right of the great judgments that's going to play out upon the earth all right and it's and and we're this time we're in it all right they ain't no Esau his agenda all right which basically only is the heavenly father's agenda of prophecy is going to go ahead all right, and there's no two ways about it. So let me pre uh, So it's second as just fifteen and seven. Therefore saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. All right, and that's why we're in this faith, all right? As, it's, as it was mentioned in Ezekiel 9 and, and 4, uh, go through the midst of the city and set a mark upon them that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, all right? So anyone that came in his faith, all right, that are the hateful, oh, so lucky, uh, the hopeful elect, all right, they came in because of sighing and crying. This world, they felt within their spirit, this world ain't right, man. All right? And they were sighing and crying. And and only their spirit was desirous of the Heavenly Father's word, which he's saying that he, he because he hears those cries and that, com, that complaint, he's, he's not going to hold his mouth no more. The words that he spoke, you know, so verse 9 it says, And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. All right? So the Heavenly Father ain't going to hold his mouth no more. All right? He's going to make it be known how he feels. All right? So let me get into this article. So this is a big deal, all right? Because this is setting up the, the foundations for the mark. Correct, right, because part of the mark, the big thing with the mark is um, it isn't just something that goes inside and, and that's it. No, it it has a, it has a it has an, an another part to it. All right, that other part being that the information that's up upon the mark. All right, that's why when you go into the root words, you find the 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 the, the, the actual root word of of karagma, all right, for mark. Is um, what's this word? Grapho, which means to write, all right, because it's going to be written information. And this is leading to that written information, all right, because when you deal with that RFID, 
and NFC, what you find is that it has what? Information on it. You can be used for your passport, as you can see here. All right. can be used for your um, credit and debit cards, contactless payment. It can be used for many forms of different tech. And it's the same thing. So let's get into this article, all right? So it says, Maxine passports or passes or certificates are being rushed through around the world, all right? Because of the worldwide agenda, all right? According to prophecy, including in places where most people have not even been able to get the Maxine yet, all right? Because that's not important. The main agenda is what? Establishing this mark. And this is part of the mark system. The B system, Salakia. They're being touted as a way to jump, as a way of jump starting the global economy by providing a means of for people to prove their vaccinated status, allowing them to travel, shop, travel, shop, or uh, go to the gym, attend sporting or cultural events, and conduct another, uh, other indoor activities. Countries like Israel, Saudi Arabia. And Singapore have already introduced Maxine passports in the last couple months. All right, endorsed by a state that establishes citizenship and guarantees diplomatic pro protection. A traditional passport does not require the bearer to participate in the Maxine program, although immunity certificates have existed for diseases such as yellow fever. All right, so it says another difference is that the Maxine passport is likely to come in the form of a digital document, all right, because everything is going digital. That's part of Klaus Schwab being the, being the face of the Great Reset, which is a call for, um, not concert, like basically strengthening the system, as they say. It's, they're calling for a fourth industrial revolution. Where about whereby all the things that's going on dealing with um all the things that are going on dealing with um who's this guy? Um Salakia man oh, thought past man, I say it. Um Another difference is that a, a Maxine document the potential scope of his application is also far broader than a normal passport. It could be required not only to establish identity of Maxine status and national borders, but also to travel, access public buildings and basic services within one's own country of residence. All right. It's basically mentioned everything but the mark. All right. But that's all, all that technology utilize the mark all right so it's not far-fetched it's just a matter of time all right and we know this because why they've tied in the testing in the bloodstream all right to know if you're a cis a cis a symptomatic basically that means when you you don't show the signs so they say of this this virus all right that basically if they put the, the, the mark in you, that will basically let them know before a couple of days prior to the onset and then let them know that you have to get the vaccine. All right? So that shows you they're tying it all in. It's all coming in all together. In countries that already have an established national health, health service, such as the UK and Israel, the Maxine passport has been mandated at a state level. In the US, tech and healthcare companies are, firm, are firmly in the driver's seat. At least 17 alternative programs are currently under development. As for the EU, it is proposed issuing digital green certificates, certificates that would allow EU residents to travel freely across the 27 nation block by summer, as long as they have been vaccinated, tested negative for uh, CV19 or recovered from the disease. It's worth noting that the EU has been studying the feasibility of creating a common EU vaccination card since 2019, all right? And that's, that's there's information out on that, all right? 
So let me read this. International initiatives. There are also initiatives taking place internationally, such as Smart Vaccination Certificate Working Group, whose partners include WHO, UNICEF, ITU, and the European Commission. The group is focused on establishing key specifications, standards, and a trust framework for a digital vaccination certificate to facilitate implementation. Bare big words, bro. One second, let me read this again, man, because this shit just get sounds like some cycle bubble, all right? Whose partners include who? UNICEF, ITU, and European and the European Commission. So basically, World Health Organ, all these organizations mentioned have great pulling power within the world, whether it be in health, food etc etc politically says as the group is focused on establishing key specifications standards and a trust framework for a digital vaccination certificate to facilitate implementation of effective and interoperable digital solutions that support cv19 vaccine delivery and monitoring with intended applicability to other vaccines, all right? Another initiative is the Common, is the common Path Digital Health App being developed by the Commons Project Foundation, CPJ, which, is, which was founded by the Rockefeller Foundation and it's supported by the World Economic Forum, all right, being there at the forefront of the Great Reset. And the Rockefeller Foundation, you know, they're, they're the America, American uh, offshoot of the Rothschild family. So th- these are major players that are being mentioned, being spoke of, all right. The Common Pass is, a, is, off, is both a framework and an app that will allow individuals to access their lab results and vaccination records, all right? Um, um, to validate their CV status without revealing any other underlying personal health information. So basically that's a system being set up in place as a foundation, because remember, this mark is just like the tab the tabulating machine, right? Like going back into um, the apostles brought this out. I believe it was Apostle Kababu uh, a while ago, dealing with the so called Jews in in the so called Holocaust. How they basically got um, they were being kept tabs on, and that goes back to um, um, the tabulating machine. It'll be a code, a five-digit code, I believe, would be tattooed on the person, all right, the said person, and they will come to the tabulating machine, and when they present that code, that number, it will it'll basically bring forth information of all the biometrics, basically mean, meaning all the, you know, blood type, this, that, and the other will be presented before the people, all right, and that's the same thing they're doing under the guise of this CV19. Then there's ID2020, a non-governmental organisation that ad- advocates for digital IDs for the bi- for the billion undocumented people wide, worldwide and underserved groups like refugees, all right? So really, that's just Esau saying he wants to have every no identify everyone and, and thereby identifying everyone can tax the fucking the people, basically. <laughs> In 2019, ID 2020 launched a new digital identity program in collaboration with the government of Bangladesh and the Global Alliance of Vaccines and Immunization is now involved in the Good Health Pass Collaborative, an open, in, an open inclo, inclusive uh, cross-sector initiative bringing together leading companies and organizations from the technology health and travel sections, all right? So, pools for thought. So, it says some of these initiatives are already being 
piloted by companies including airlines and local or regional authorities. All Nippon's uh, airways has started a test to the common pass on its flights from Tokyo, Haneda, uh, to New York. Last week, New York unveiled its uh, ex- Excelsior Pass, which is based on technology from IBM, and states other states are likely to follow suit. France has also just completed a month-long trial uh, of a health passport app for Air France passengers travelling to Martinique and Guadeloupe. Yeah, Jake, uh, that's mainly Jake, man. Martinique and Guadeloupe, that's Benjamin over there in the French, the French Caribbean, basically. All right? Man like um, Thierry Henry and them, man. Nah, but in all seriousness, it shows you, okay, this is what they're doing. It says, the speed at the, at which these initiatives are being rushed out should give pause for thought. Yeah, a pause for thought. This is damn devil's doing fulfilling prophecy. This is Revelation 12 and 12. It says, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have a, but a short time. All right? He knows his time is short. It's another scripture in my mind, but it's escaping me right now. But that's the point. He knows that his time is short. Just as with the contact tracing apps, the rollout is, is haphazardous and rife with conflicts of interest. The technology is unproven. The privacy issues are glaring. Below are seven reasons why I believe maxing passports should worry us. Perhaps you can think of more, all right? So let's get into it. One, we still don't know how effective or safe the maxines are, all right? It says, um, the on, t- the on, ostin, goal behind the Maxine passport to provide proof that a person has taken an official approved, officially approved Maxine and therefore possess less contagion risk, all right? But that's BS because you had uh, Boris Johnson telling the people a few weeks ago not to go out and <laughs> not to mix with people in their households because they got the, the Maxine, saying that it's not, they're not sure if it works. Well, then it, it was, it was sort of, if you're not sure if it works, then why do you want to give out Maxine passports? All right? If you're not sure why it works, if it works, then, you know, why Why are you investing so much um, so much faith in the Maxine? All right? So it says, yet we still don't know just how effective or safe the Maxine is. And this is the thing, the percentages of um, success when people get vaccinated is is dwindling, all right? It's going down, I believe, one of them, the Pfizer went from, like, 98% to, like, 90%. You had the Johnson & Johnson one and even AstraZeneca, all these different ones where they basically lied, all right? They they, chopped, they cooked up the numbers, all right, to get out there, and these were approved and, and basically bought by the government, all right? But then also the other thing that you got to remember as well with this is that um, um, let me read it again. Yet we still don't know just how effective or safe each vaccine is. Naturally, the efficiency levels of each vaccine vary. All right. Ah, oh, man. It's right. Oh, yeah. And you keep getting a blood clotting thing now. All right. That's the big thing as well. People dying from the vaccine. As who itself concedes, there is still uncertainty over whether inoculation actually prevents transmission of the virus. So, see, it's getting into it. All right. Yeah, it mentions that. Uh, so, it says, Maxine geopolit- Geopolitics. To all intents and purposes, 
the West is already locked in a new Cold War with China and Russia, Iraq, because that's the Heavenly Father for the prophecy, Iraq. Let me, let me, um, read this. This is uh, Revelation 8 and 13, and behold, I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth thereof. The, uh, to, of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound those three world wars represent three world wars alright let me read this it's Revelation 11 14 the second world was passed and behold the third world cometh quickly alright so the second world war took place 1939 to 1945 and According to the word of the Lord, the third world is coming quickly, all right? So that's why hot on the hills of that, you have the Cold War. But that's wars and rumors of wars, all right? And all these things going on, these little skirmishes with vassals of of um, the United States and Russia is basically what, all right? It's, it's them, again, rumors of wars, okay, all over the earth. But it's only going to culminate to what? World War Three, all right. So let me read this. Um, it's a book of um. Ah uh, no, I know what's going to do. Uh, a lot. Let me move on. So there's a book of Ezekiel 38 and 1. It says, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog. Right? Being Gog and Magog was a, an inheritance that was given unto um, the sons of J uh, Japhet, right? the descendants of Japhet. But today, modern day Gog and Magog is Russia. Right? So, this is talking about them today. It's a prophecy dealing with Russia. Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord power. Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. Yeah, turn them back into that Cold War spirit. Because there was a moment where you had the USSR, the Soviet Union, basically crumble, all right? But they've been res resurrected in, in line with this prophecy, Ezekiel 38 and 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks, hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armour, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Alright, and that's where we're at, man. Alright, all you got to do is Google uh, Russia and Ch Russia, these wars, you'll basically hear about it. So let's go and let's read it. So it says, um, to all intents, and purposes, the West is already locked in a new Cold War with China and Russia. Tensions are escalating on an almost daily basis against such a backdrop. It's hardly beyond the realms of possibility that at the same point down the line, countries or companies in the West will refuse to recognize vaccine certificates that are based on Russian or Chinese vaccines and vice versa. Yeah, just like when you go to a said country like the UK, you could have a degree from a country like, say for example, Ghana's come to mind, all right? You could know the education system over there, mind you, is a lot more thorough, all right? And it's more intense. So you could have a degree from over that land, come over here, they ain't going to recognise it, all right? 
So that's the same thing that's going to happen with these vaccines. You could be vaccinated according to, you know, the geopolitics of things, the Russian or Chinese uh, vaccine, and they'll say, well, we don't recognise that. So you're going to have to be tested and wherever the process is, yeah? So it says the justifications for doing so will grow as bad as news continues to emerge about the efficiency and safety of vaccines. Um... Yeah. So they all got different efficiency rates, okay? The potential for Mission Creek to begin with smart uh health cards are likely to include a person's complete name, gender, birth date, mobile phone number and email address in a dis- in addition to vaccination information. But although advertised as digital vaccination records they are clearly intended to be used for much more. Public information on the protocol notes that smart health cards are building blocks that can be used across the health across healthcare, including managing a complete immunization record that goes far beyond CV19 vaccines, sharing data with public health agencies and communication with healthcare providers, all right? Uh, uh, okay, that's interesting. So it says the framework is unlikely to be limited to healthcare information. This goes into, going into the mark, all right? The use of the term digital wallet both by the Maxine Collective Initiative and IBM to refer to their digital, di- different digital health uh, passes suggest that economic activity could become an integral part of the framework's functions. So that shows you it's the mark, all right? These um, Maxine passports are basically going to establish the mark, all right? Because they're going to tie in the economic part to everything. And we did we read earlier they were talking about access to certain places won't be granted based upon you having the certificate or the or the or the passport right so now this may even give you access to to money as well all right because remember when this first came the Maxine I'm sorry when the C V one nine first come out there was a big change to a big uh increase in everyone. Spend um going contactless over here in the UK especially all right where they stopped using cash because they were saying that the the virus can live on their excess of days, blah blah blah, so now they may they they well not may they're saying they're gonna do it all right, so as the developer of the Maxine Collective Initiative Smart Health Cards Framework at Microsoft Health, Josh C Mandel hinted in a recent and you gotta take their hints. I mean, they're hinting, but you know that's the direction they're pointing in because throughout the whole course of this pandemic we're in, anything that's been hinting is basically, you know, gone in that direction. So it says smart, in a recent YouTube presentation, a smart health cars could soon be used as IDs for commercial activities such as renting a car. All right, that's that mark. All right. That is that mark. This is all happening in the central banks around the world are busily laying the foundation for central bank digital currencies or CBDCs as they've come to be known. Raises the specter of digital vaccine passports being used as a vehicle for the creation of purely digital currency system to replace physical coins and notes. That's not to say that uh, to say this will happen. But it's a possibility. The Maxine passport does become a digital currency wallet and cash is eliminated. Opting out will be much harder and opting in will be leaving us subject to levels of surveillance and control that we hear heretofore unthinkable. 
All right, and I've been, I'm, I'm looking to do a video, you know, check this out, video, and I wanted to go into some uh, dystopian TV programs to kind of, you know, suggest to you brothers to check out, because um, I've been going over a few that I know going back a decade now, all right, uh, I want to mention there, because I don't want to get into it, but go with the spirit, jump on me. I'll do the videos, okay, and I'll get into that information. Basically, this is what the, this is allowing Esau to play, play fun, all right? Let me go in. Here. So this is um, Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had the fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? All right. The heavenly Father is the Father of all spirits. All right. That's why he's known as he to be, Yahweh. Okay. He is the Father of all spirits. And everyone should be subject to him. Everyone is subject to him according to his will. All right. But the point being is that all spirits can be accounted by the Heavenly Father, because he made them all. He has control over all of them. He has possession over all of them. That's why um, um, Esau is trying to, he's trying to um, pin himself as a most high, basically. All right? Because basically, Bear me one moment. Okay. Uh, so yeah. There's a book of Second Thessalonians two uh, and three. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means. Alright. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Alright? Because that's a device of Satan, deception. So it says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there shall be a fool in the way first. All right, and that's being fulfilled. All right, that's why we're all known as Gentiles. No, no one on this earth was like, yo, we knew, you know, I'm an Israelite. You know, you have men that are born into the faith. We It, it came in accordance with uh, high priest, um, Abba Bivens basically bringing in the way, the right? being a forerunner. So it says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except they become a fool in the way first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. All right? So it says, who opposeth, and that's talking about Esau Eden. He's a man of sin. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worshipped, so that he is of the as the Most High Yahweh, saith in the temple of the Most High, all right, showing himself that he is the Most High Yahweh, all right, and that's through iconoclasm, because contrary to popular belief, the Most High in the heavens is a so-called black man, a right, man of man of color, dark, a dark hue. Of 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 um of pigmentation, <laughs> he's a dark skinned man, a so called black man, right? And Esau's basically whitewashed his image, right? Because he 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 basically uh, has put himself up as God, right? And in doing so, that's why he wants to be the he wants to be like the Most High, be the Father of Spirits, right? And have account for everyone. So I'm gonna kind of steamroll through these actually, cause um, you know. So it says creating a two tier, uh, society world, since its very inception, CV one nine has been a pandemic of inequality. This is particularly true in Israel, which has already already, 
uh, a two-tier society long before the CV came along. It recently became the first country to launch a nationwide vaccine passport scheme, the so-called Green Pass, but it's intended to target is, is Israelis, not Palestinians. All right. According to The Guardian, just over 4% of the 5 million Palestinians living in the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip have so far received vaccines. Active CV cases are back near historic highs while the rest of Israel, they're the lowest level since last June. Maxine passports could end up exacerbating social divisions, whether they are used, all right, well, you know what? This is something I wanted to go into, dealing with the check this out segment, but basically it, it is establishing, you know, it's establishing those that are within the society that have, whether it, it's not been established yet, but it's moving towards that. If you have the max scene, right, then you can have access to certain things. Just like if you have, I mean, yeah, that's it really. So we're moving on. It says there's loss of bodily uh, autonomy and integrity. Forcing an experimental vaccine upon someone who doesn't want it clearly contravenes their right of, to bodily Autonomy and integrity, according to the EU Carrot Charter of Fundamental Rights, everyone has the right to respect, uh, for his or her physical and mental integrity in the fields of medicine and biology. The following must be respected in particular. Blah blah blah. All right. So yeah, they're going to infringe on your body. That's what they want to do. Most governments and tech giants have already shown they cannot be trusted with most of our valuable data. Right? And that's been shown over and over again. Right? Uh, so it says, verse, verse 7. Number 7. Whatever the politicians might say, a maxine certificate will be permanent. Right? So... Yeah, let me read this one, actually. When the vaccine certificate debate reached fever pitch in the UK last week, the Conservative Party tried to assuage assuage voter fears by insisting that the certificate would be temporary. All right, passports were meant to be temporary. Do you know how many things on this earth were meant to be temporary on this devil's rule? But they turned out permanent. All right? Just add... Just ask Reuben over there. Ask Gad over there in America. They'll they'll tell you about temporary agreements. Alright? It will be time it'll be time limited and I think the duration of the scheme will be measured in months. One unnamed insider said the party will not wear any longer. This is the, from the same government that publicly insisted for months that it was not even considering vaccine certificates while in private it was examining how they could be used. Yeah, they had contracts out for multiple companies. I did a video on it a couple months back now, um, or weeks, where they were basically saying, like, look, they wanted to find out different ways they could go about establishing the max, um, that passport, basically. So it says, um, there's no way in the world that the UK government is going to just hand it back a few months later. As history has taught us time and time time again, whenever governments reward themselves new temporary powers, they usually find it painfully hard to relinquish them. Such will no doubt uh, be the case with a Maxine passport, pass, certificate or whatever they want to call it. It's gonna lead to the mark. Alright, so let me read this and close out the video. So I'll just hit a couple precepts. Um, Jesus, jog my memory. I meant to do another video actually. Um, it says Revelation 13 and 16. It says, And he calls with all, both small and great, 
great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And the no man might buy or sell save he that had a mark. Right? And that's what they said. They said it would, it would spill over into economic use because you've been seeing the word they use, pivot. Central banks pivoting, right? As all businesses have been pivoting, right? Basically moving from the old way of business into the new way of business. The new way of business with the central banks is not cryptocurrency, but it's digital-based currency, which basically is, you know, a, a, you know, a, a digital pound, a digital dollar, a digital euro, a digital one, or whatever, right? That's where they're moving towards. So that's setting up the mark. Or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. For the for it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score, six. All right. So, um, yeah, man. That's that's it. I'm going to close the lesson there. I pray you will edify it. This is, you know, the mark is being established, man. We're seeing it. So, we're almost out of here, man.